Hey everybody, um, we're going to continue talking about parametric equations. Um, in this video, we are going to start talking about how to do some calculus uh, with parametric equations. In this, in this video, we're just going to look at first and second derivatives. So I'm going to start with the following parametric equations, right? x of t is equal to 3t, y of t is 9t minus 1, over the interval um, uh, 0 to 1. Okay. Um, I can also think of it, remember, as coordinate pairs. We're putting in values of t and this, this, this function, uh, these parametric equations are spitting out coordinate pairs, right? So it's going to be uh, this, this, if we think of this as a particle traveling, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spit out points traveling along a line because they're both um, linear functions of our, coordinate, uh, of our coordinates. And I've computed here the initial point and the terminal point, right? The, the, the point it spits out at the beginning of its journey and the point it spits out at the end. And I get uh, these two coordinate pairs, right? So let's just compute the slope of the line uh, that this point travels along, right? So I've got eight minus negative one over three minus zero is going to be nine over three or three. Right. But let's remember what that is, right? This 9 over 3 really tells us what's going on. We're taking a look at the ratio of the change in y to the change in x, right? So if you think back to Calc 1, this was our notion of the derivative. Um, we, look, we look at the, the ratio of how y changes to how x changes, right? So we think of this sometimes as delta y delta x. And then, of course, in the limit, we get dy dx. But this is going to be pretty useful for us, right? This ratio of how things change. So what we want to do with a slope, um, in this case, the slope of the line, or more generally, the slope of a tangent line, we want to compare how is y changing as x changes, right? But with parametric equations, we don't have a direct comparison to them. But what we can do is we can consider a, a change in t, right? Unless it's a change in y and a change in x, right? So we'll get, we'll get a ratio of, we'll get a number that represents how y changes as t changes, and we can compare that to how x changes as t changes. For instance, right, if, if, if I know that every time uh, one hour passes, I move two miles ahead, and every time one hour passes, you move four hours ahead, two and four are numbers that tell you how each of us change as time changes. And we can compare those two numbers to say, oh, you're moving twice as fast as me. As me. In other words, for every one that I move, you move two, right? So we're going to use a similar kind of idea here, right? That as y changes, as t changes, we're going to compare that to as x changes, as t changes. In other words, this is going to tell us how y changes as x changes, but we can get it by looking at dy dt over dx dt, right? So we're kind of using t as an intermediary here, okay? Um, so for instance, in this case, right, if I look at dy dt, so here's our functions, dy dt is equal to nine dx, dt is equal to three. I'm just taking the derivatives of these two functions, right? Then if I look at their ratio, dy dt, dx dt, I get nine over three or three. This tells me how y changes as x changes, okay? So this is going to be how we compute derivatives for parametric equations, right? First of all, notice it matches with what we think it should match. This, this, this path is along a line. If we want the tangent line, 
right? Well, it's, it's the slope of that line. It turns out to be three, <coughs> which is exactly what this gave us, okay? Um, right, so again, we're, this is, this is, we're spitting out these, these functions that are, that are having to do with y and t, or x and t, but we get the ratio between the two of them, okay? Um, second derivative is just a little bit more complicated. Um, in the second derivative, um, this thing here, right? In this case, we had a fairly simple example. We'll do a more complicated one. This turned out to just be a constant. Typically, dy dt is a function of t, and dx dt is a function of t, right? So for instance, if these were both squared, we'd have a very different situation, but dx dt would be uh, would be uh, 6t and uh, this would be 18t um, and maybe if this was let's say this was 9t squared minus t when you take the derivative there's going to be a rational function that we end up with here right so it just so happens that the t's disappeared in this case but more generally this thing here is actually a function of t okay so that's going to inform us for how we should think about the second derivative right so if dy dx is a function of t, okay, when we figure out the second derivative, what does the second derivative tell us? It tells us how does the first derivative change as x changes, not the derivative of x, as x changes. So we want to use the same idea that we used here, here. In other words, I want to know how does not, how does y change as t changes? I want to know how does dy dx change as t changes and compare that to how x changes as t changes, okay? So this is gonna look a little different than the last one. And the notation's a little bit, uh, it hides a little bit. So when we do our example, we'll, we'll, we'll take a closer look at this. So how does, how does this function change as t changes? That's just saying take a derivative with respect to t of this function, right? And the denominator looks exactly like it did here because we're still comparing this function here changing to changes in x as t changes. So in the new denominator, we get dx dt, the same denominator we have up here. It seems like it should be something different. For instance, it seems like maybe it should be the second derivative or something like that. That's not the case, right? Because we're still comparing it to how x changes. And so this is going to be the expression for the second derivative of parametric equations, okay? These derivatives are still going to geometrically, give us the same geometric ideas that they gave us when we weren't doing parametric equations, um, but, but in reference to the path that our particles traveled along. So for example, let's go to this first example we did. Um, let's see, this will be, right here is our, particle traveling along this line from its terminal point, initial point to its terminal point. The derivative dy dx, which we found by finding dy dt and dx dt, tells us about the shape of the path that the particle is on. In this case, it's a line, so it just tells us the slope of the line, okay? Let's go to a slightly more complicated example. Let's take a look at, the following parametric equation. Let's look at x of t equals e to the t, y of t equals e to the 2t, okay? And we'll look over the interval. Let me double check what I did here. Okay, we'll do from uh, one to three. So t is gonna be in the interval 
oh no, sorry, one to the natural log of three, zero to the natural log of three, pardon me. Okay, there's our, there's our interval, okay? So we've got our parametric equations. Let's try experimenting with these two formulas. So remember our first derivative, dy dx, is going to be equal to dy dt over dx dt. All right. So let's see what, uh, what these give us. So what's dy dt? dy dt is the derivative of this, or y prime of t, which is 2e to the 2t. y prime, oh, sorry, x prime of t is just e to the t. So I'm taking this ratio, 2e to the 2t divided by e to the t, which is equal to 2e, sorry, uh, yeah, 2e to the t. Okay. So a couple of things. Let's just remind ourselves what this means. What we're, what we're really doing here is saying every time I change t by an increment, this is how y changes. At the same time, this is how e changes or uh, x changes. So if I take a look at, if I compare how they each change for the same increment in t, I get a comparison of how they change relative to each other. Okay, think back to that first example. If 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 uh, uh, you know we know our relative spe our speeds relative to time, we can compare them to each other, right? If I know that every time an hour passes, I go two miles, and every time an hour passes, you go four miles. I now can also say every time I go a mile, you go two, right? I've, I've eliminated T from that. I'm, I'm comparing ourselves, okay? Now, notice what happens here. Here, I had a more complicated set of derivatives. dy dx is a function of T, right? This expression over here only has T in it. So let's take a look at the second derivative. Our formula for our second derivative, d squared y, dx squared is I take the derivative with respect to t of dy dx over the derivative of x with respect to t, right? So ddt of dy dx, this is dy dx, so I'm taking d dt of 2e to the t. dx dt we already did is e to the t. This comes out to 2e to the t over e to the t or 2. Okay, that's our second derivative. Okay, so this tells us the exact same thing that our derivatives always tell us. In other words, if we were to look at the path, and we will in just a moment, if we were to look at the path that this particle is traveling along, or the path that this, uh, these parametric equations are spitting out points on, if I want to know the slope of the tangent line at a point along that path, if I know the value of t that gets me that point, then this expression will tell me the slope of the tangent line there. This tells me uh, what the second derivative tells us is concavity. Okay. So they still have the same meaning. All right, so let's take a look at this function uh, and its graph. All right, so there it is. All right, so here is our function. Right. Let's do a little bit of work with it first. So I want to first find out what curve this is along, all right? So I'm gonna do this work next to the graph. We can keep looking at the graph while we do this. Let's see if I can write a little better than I have been. So we've got our functions, our parametric equations, x of t is equal to e to the t, and y of t is equal to uh, e to the 2t, 
So I want to write this. Uh, let's see if we can figure out what, um, what graph this is, what path this lives on, okay? So I'm gonna do that elimination, uh, eliminate the parameter method we did before. I'm gonna take this first equation, right? Let me just simplify it for a second as x equals e to the t, which means the natural log of x equals t. Right, that's just the definition of the natural log or the exponential, they're, they're inverse functions to each other, right? Which means y is equal to e to the two natural log of x. Just do a little bit of algebra here. We get uh, e to the natural log of x squared, right? The rules of exponents tell me I multiply two times natural log of x when I, times the, these two exponents multiply, which is what exactly we have here. e to the natural log of x is just x and I get x squared. So in fact, the points that these parametric equations are spitting out all live on this parabola, right? So that's the path along which the points all live, okay? Now let's pick a point along this parabola. So we, we know the derivative of this parabola, parabola is 2x, but we also figured out that dy dx is equal to 2e to the t. Let's see how these two things play out. Let's look at the point. Um, Let's look at the point where I'm going to make this easy for us to compute. Let's look at t equals the natural log of 2, okay? which is the point where so uh, x will be equal to e to the natural log of 2, which is just 2. And e to the 2 natural log of 2 is just 4. So this is the point 2, 4. Okay. So let's compare these two expressions. According to this one, the derivative y prime is equal to 2x. Well, we just said x is equal to 2. So this says y prime is 2 times 2 or 4. This expression tells me dy dx, which is just a different symbol for y prime, is 2e to the natural log of 2, which is 2 times 2 or 4, right? So they're giving us the same information there, right? There's no difference in the kind of inf uh, the information that we get from them, which is exactly what we expect, right? We just take get rid of these uh, grids. I don't think we really need them, okay? All right, let's do the second derivative. So now our second derivative, y double prime, is just 2, which is exactly what we said in the previous work, right? So we're getting exactly the same information out of these first and second derivatives, and the meaning is the same. How does, in the case of uh, the first derivative, how does a change in x, what kind of a change in y do we get? Here we, we run that through t, right? Our intermediary here, we get a direct relationship. Right? And then the second derivative tells us how does this thing change as x changes, right? We're not, we're not looking at x prime here, we're just looking at x. So this is, this is, that's where that idea comes from, that we're taking the derivative of this with respect to x. So back here, we took the derivative of y and we, of y prime, and here we took the derivative of x, right? If you go back to that original, uh, uh, the expression for the derivative here, okay? And maybe just to finish this off, as we expect, if I create a tangent line at the point two, four, the expression for it is y equals four x minus four. It's that slope that we wanted and it at least matches with our expectations, right? And again, this is, our, this, this little section of path is where the particle travels, and this is what that particle looks like traveling on that, right? Here's the initial point, here's the terminal point. At the natural log of three, it goes from when we put in zero, we're getting the point one, one. 
when we put in natural log of three, we're getting the 0.39, right? Which you can see also respect, they respect both formulations, this uh, parametric equations, as well as when we, when we uh, found the removed, eliminated the parameter, okay? So one question you might be asking yourself right now, and we're not gonna go into details of this, um, but let me give you an answer. One question I would be asking at this point is, so why in the world, this seems very easy to eliminate the parameter and get to y equals x squared. It was kind of a simpler process, perhaps, than what we did on the previous page. It's not always possible. So um, there are some parametric equations where it's fairly easy to figure out what path it lies on, but it's not always the case. I'm using these examples so we can compare it to stuff we know, but when we have much more complicated parametric equations, right, where it's not easy to solve for uh, 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 the parameter, or when you do, you get something horribly complicated and you're shoving it into something else horribly complicated, it, right, this, this worked out pretty easy. Um, when I, when I eliminated the parameter here, everything kind of canceled nicely. If there were a bunch of sines and cosines and natural logs all floating around in here, that wouldn't be the case. And so it's, it's nice to know that we have an alternative way uh, to find these derivatives. Um, okay, that is it for this one. Um, thanks, everybody. I will see you next time.